My name now is Francesca King, but originally it was Francesca Ochere. Um, I'm from West Africa, Ghana. So when I was finally 16, my dad decided maybe it is time for me to join him out here and uh, to better, I think it's actually was surgery that was part of why he wanted to bring me out here to see if there are doctors who can potentially fix my face. Um, because I've had this since I was two years old. The story goes, I don't know much about it because I was so young. I was one year old, one year old. I heard something, I got a measles. Measles attacked me and somehow it destroyed my face. I've been going through my whole life trying to fix this uh, correction of whatever happened to me since I was a child back in uh, Ghana. Um, so I think he originally brought me here hoping to correct it, which we, we did some of it in New York City. I saw some surgeons and uh, it's better than what it used to be. So, you know, you live, you count your blessings. <laughs> and you keep you keep rolling on you've been teased your whole life your whole life my whole life I've been teased you know growing up in Ghana uh, friendship was hard dating was hard <laughs> um, I'm chuckling about it now because I you don't want I don't want to cry um, but you, you've lived through that life of you know struggling and um, just people making fun of you it is real uh, be, be being made, made fun of. Um, why, why do I keep doing this? It's simple, you know, you're a woman, you're a girl, and you read in a magazine and what beauty is supposed to be, what, what it isn't, and so you try to perfect yourself. You try to live to that standard of what that is. So my whole life I've been trying to, just doing research, figuring out, well, who can do it better? And what can I do to look better? Um, I've, I have a 10-year-old boy, I have a 4-year-old boy. I think sometimes I just want to live for them. I'm doing it, not even for myself, but for them. I panic sometimes that they're going to make friends and their friends are going to come to our house and maybe laugh at their mom, you know? You think of all these things, like, oh, your mom is that word, ugly. Oh, you, you, you just, I think this way for my children. And so I try to better I try to I want to improve on that I think I'm just I'm doing it for me but also for them and also why not <laughs> if there's somebody out there who can make who can make me even breathe better because I also have problem breathing uh, out of one of my nostrils so even if nothing else at all and I can breathe a little better why not do it well, I think I've always been an optimistic girl and then now a woman. So I'm, I never really saw anything anybody, any surgeon did as a failure. I only wish, I, like I said, I knew you were gonna do this. I probably would have brought you a picture of what I probably used to look like. I see it as improvement every step of the way. You know, you, I'm pissed, you get, I get angry. That, that impacts, because like I said, you come out expecting something better than what you got. But, um, I tend to want to look at the bright side of things. As angry as I get, I also like to see that, oh, well, it's not that bad. <laughs> you know? A wise woman once told me, you are who you are. What are you going to do? I started in Africa, my first one. Um, the one that I have memory of when I came to New York, my first one, probably at 17, I had one. Um, and then I have another one, I think. I have another one in New York. Maybe at 18, 19, I had another one. Um, and then eventually I have one here in this, in this state, Washington State. 
yeah. And I just kind of, I think I kind of almost gave up after that, if, if you really want to know the truth. Like, yeah, okay, whatever. This is, maybe this is as good as it gets. I'm okay, I have to be okay with that. Um, weirdly enough, then I got married. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, my husband loves me. He loves me so much that he's the one doing it. I didn't find this guy. He just lay in bed looking for things. He goes, I think I found somebody. <gasps> so, <laughs> so yeah, that's how we ended up back here again, you know. And he always said, you don't have to do anything if you don't want to. But if you want to, let's go give it a shot. So here we are again. Why Dr. Sergeant? Did I tell you? So here's the thing. We went and I went to see him in, in Seattle. I have the money to do surgery now. At least in the past I did it. <laughs> I actually have money to do my surgery if I want to. This incredible guy, Dr. Sergeant, just, I went to see him, he, we sat down, and he, before that we've done, we've read about him. You know, his work in Africa and what he does. It just touched me, it really touched me. And I wanted to go and see who he is, what he's about. And sure enough, when I met him, I don't even know how to explain it. This man was like, I'm so sorry this happened to you. I want to help you. And I want to help you free of charge. I have never met a surgeon like that. You know what I'm saying? No doctor have ever wanted to do anything for free. Um, I thought, holy moly, what? Why? Okay. Um, that was God. <laughs> If you don't believe in things, that, that to me, that was God. I said, okay, this is my guy. And it wasn't because he wanted to do it for free, but the fact that he actually wanted to do it for free, he doesn't have to. But he wanted, he just wanted to help me. It just melted my heart in so many ways. So it's all we talk about now. We talk about him. It's like, oh my goodness. I, my, I said, we, I, in fact, I said to him, I said, you do whatever you can do for me. I promise you, your next trip to Africa or whatever the heck you do, I will, I will fund you. So we just want to pay it forward, you know? I believe in that. So, yeah. I only wish I knew him when I was a kid. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> Maybe my life would have been different. That's the big takeaway. I, I, I keep going, well, do I need it now? Like maybe I don't need it anymore, I'm good now. I, and I am, I am very comfortable with who I am. But I can't help but to wonder that if I do not go through it either, I might live to regret it. And I don't want that. I know for sure, I'll, I'll, it'll always be in the back of my mind, why didn't you do it, why didn't you do it? Right, he seems to be better than all the ones you've seen. <laughs> so why didn't you do it? So. I'm just taking a risk, I'm taking a chance. But uh, I don't think it's gonna be, I think it will be okay. It will be great. And whatever the outcome, it will be great. This I do believe. I've been going through this my whole life. Um, who's been, the world has not been kind. You know, so that word bully and that really does exist. I've, I've lived through it. You know, being shunned out of things. I've lived through it. I'm surprised at myself that sometimes I sit here. When I say I can't believe I'm here because life has been, there's been a time where you, you didn't want to live. You know, you go through, it's been difficult. But that's what makes you believe in something greater than yourself. Like, wow, okay, I'm still here. I don't know why, but I'm still here, so I'm gonna, I do know why. The, the, you know, at the end of the day, I, one thing I have to tell you about myself is that I'm, I'm resilient, I'm strong. And uh, that part about me, I know for sure. So I just, I live, I live, I live on that, being strong and just pushing through things. <laughs>